Nigeria's economy is largely driven by the private sector, which plays a crucial role in job creation, wealth generation and economic growth. The Nigerian government has recognized the importance of the private sector involvement and has implemented policies to encourage collaboration. Also, we'll take a look at the equity market, how it fared yesterday, and the currency market will be updated in a bit too. I am Maria Adouzakari. You're on to Business Focus on Politics and Business TV. Do stay tuned for the stock market. <music> Equities market and the highest trades and the highest trades are the first for today. On the top of the list, we have First Bank Nigeria Holdings at 69 trades and MTN Nigeria at 66 trades at the volume of 69,487 at the value of 16,674. And UBN Nigeria has 63 trades at the vol at the volume of 1 million. 675 at the value of 38 million 221 we'll look at the higher uh, the top loot uh, the top gainers for today we have infinity with positive 9.79 percent and scope with positive 9.46 and our communications with positive 8.82 percent we'll look at the bottom losers for today the bottom losers for today we have Abi YDS, Abi BDS at negative 9.88% and FTN Coco with negative 9.09% negative 9 .09 and Dark Communications with negative 8.82%. The, uh, the currency market for today, for yesterday, closed at 865 per dollar in the official market and at the parallel market. The Naira closed at 1,210 $1, per dollar unofficially. The, intra, in the, intra, the intraday high recorded was 1,186 Naira per dollar as the Naira fell marginally against the US dollar, both at the official market and the parallel market on Tuesday, 12th December 2023. We'll take a short break. We'll come back for the interview segment. And our topic for today will be private sector collaboration as the driver for economic growth. Do stay tuned. <music> of iMira Consults today to discuss the topic pri private partnership collaboration as the driver to economic success. 
Good morning, Mr. Steve Adisa, and welcome to Business Focus. Good morning, and thanks for having me once again. Welcome. So let's dive right in. What exactly, could you make it clear to us what exactly is private, uh, is private collaboration, private sector collaboration, that is? Um, private sector collaboration, or let's say private sector, um, it contributes to over 90% uh, to the GDP of any nation, particularly a developing nation like uh, Nigeria. Okay. And um, it's also a pivotal to revenue generation uh, in which the sector is so broad and large that um, both the former and informal sector of uh, the private sector uh, uh, not only create job but also ensure that people are being engaged. And again, it's also... Um, an avenue where you also reduce the poverty ratio. And uh, in a country like Nigeria, you know, over the time it's been said, government don't have hand in business, but government must contribute their own part in business. True. Now, for the private sector to drive and to, to strive really, they, they need the government. Government needs the private sector, and that is why the idea of uh, public-private partnership also come into limelight, uh, which is also a good thing. Government cannot do all. When you talk of innovation, you can only get it from the private sector. You talk of technology-driven, you can also only get it from the private sector. You talk of human capital development, you can get that from also from private sector. Uh, plus many other things that the private sector can also, uh, they, can, they are doing. So you can't just say you don't need them. How do you reduce poverty? How do you reduce unemployment? You need them to grow the economy. You need them to build. You need the private sector to even make, uh, for you to be able to present even yourself to the world. And importantly, as we speak today, you also need the private sector to fight climate change for you. <laughs> so plus many other things, uh, private sure. sector are actually a key uh, sector in any nation, not just Nigeria alone, in any nation of the world. Private sector is a key player. Okay, so how would you say is the situation of the, currently, how would you say is the situation of the private sector in a country like Nigeria? Well, uh, currently, you know, Nigeria is being faced with its own challenges. True. Sure. And the uh, private sector are not left out of it. You know, with the current trend of uh, events in Nigeria, private sector are really, really fighting in hard to, you know, to continue business. Um, if you move around town, uh, particularly you being a, a journalist, you will agree with me that um, some businesses have, uh, they have to just close up. And um, why some are struggling, and in the same process, some have to even diversify. So, our current situation is affecting everybody. Importantly, those of us on the private uh, at the private end, and you know, again, it's for our betterment. If if bottlenecks can be cleared off, the private sector will have more opportunity to, you know, swim without any difficulties as such. In, in the business uh, world. True. But as of today, no matter how difficult it may seem or look like, uh, private will be private. And definitely, we'll still find our way in, uh, in the market. Remember, who are the people who come to the market? All of us. Who are the uh, provider of goods and services? The private. You know? So put together everything. Um, we will survive and uh, we'll weather the storm, no matter how difficult it may be. Okay, so would you say that our private sector can compete in other, um, with other developing countries? Yeah. Would you say it's that strong? Yes. Okay. Because when you look at most of the uh, companies we have in Nigeria, uh, particularly those indigenous companies, are they not competing already at the global stage? True. You, at least we have one or two, three, four, five... Uh, institutions in Nigeria today that are spread across board in other nations of the world. 
And uh, what do you need? So far, you can play according to the rules. Nothing stops you uh, in being in any other part of the world. And uh, if you also look at, we have so many companies in here in Nigeria, owned by Nigerians, that are also surviving in other nations of the world. Importantly, you know, in a nation where you have infrastructure in place, for any business to survive is become easier. For any business to survive in such economy or such a country, it becomes so seamless because infrastructure is in place. You know, business find it difficult to survive where infrastructure is actually uh, not in place. And what are these infrastructure? You talk of uh, electricity, you talk of transportation, you know, good roads now, True. all right? Um, even down to uh, available human capital. Now, you agree with me, with over 200 million in Nigeria, you have your human capital readily available. You can, uh, I remember some years back, um, one of my brother, he has to be exported to another country to go and work. And uh, from his testament, it was quite obvious that uh, seeing them uh, from Nigeria, they see like uh, this, they have seen a different uh, heads of people who get things done seamlessly. So uh, we can compete anywhere in the world. Okay. We can. We can compete anywhere in the world. So how would you describe the role of the private sector in Nigeria's economic development? From the inception, even to, to date and to tomorrow, the private sector plays a very key role in development of any nation. Uh, when you look at our outlook in Nigeria currently, if you have a sector who engages or who are the one contributing over 90 percent to your GDP, you can't joke with them. Sure. And that is why uh, every now and then you see government uh, parlaying with the private sector on the need for us to foster our development in terms of innovation, in terms of technology, uh, and at the same time ensuring that we reduce our poverty line. So you, the private sector is a key, uh, is one of the two that any government, any day, we want to ensure that uh, they give them enabling environment. Uh, in some, if you also look at events, you also see uh, for your more people to come in to do the food, uh, government are also ensuring that one way or the other tax holiday, even in some sectors, you know, um, and plus every other incentive government can give just to encourage more participation in both former and informal sector of the sector of the private uh, business world. So Mr. Mr. Steve Idisa, what um, favorable policies would you say is on ground for um, the private sector? Yeah, currently um, the private sector are enjoying one like even the uh, the soft loan, uh, because uh, the government make uh, available, currently people are applying, organizations okay. are also applying, okay. all right? It's also a way to encourage more private participation. Which is that, the, the soft loan? The, the soft loan currently under the Office of um, uh, Trade and Investment. Okay. And then uh, they're also challenging through the uh, SMEDAN, uh, Small, Medium, uh, Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria, you know, they are also building that, right? Now, why do they need that? Remember, there was anchor borrower before now, which is also a way to also uh, strengthen the private sector. They are not left alone. Uh, at least the anchor borrower came as a result of uh, COVID. Now, subsidy has also brought, uh, subsidy removal has also brought another hardship. True. And, um, the government on their part are also, you know, working on how to reduce the burden. Again, government are also working on improving the power supply, which is another way in which the private sector can also, you know, uh, do more. And then the insecurity, government are also doing their part in which uh, getting goods from the rural area to the urban area, you know. If there is security, getting the goods to do the urban area will also not be difficult. And, and then if from the there, roads are good the, also. So all of these put together, governments are doing their part. And then private se the private sector are also the private sector players are also you know playing their part. But importantly, we can't uh, exhaust it all. 
we always keep demanding. Keep demanding in the sense that uh, if A is working, then we expect B to also work. Now, if nothing is working, we also expect the private to also ask questions, right? Uh, and again, play by the rules of the game. True. Okay, so you talked about um, technology and innovation. How would you see the private sector comes into that into that picture? Now, uh, the, the private sector coming into that picture, for instance, now look at all the tech companies we have in Nigeria. Okay. Mention one that uh, is government-owned. <laughs> one that no, or, or that's the truth. And when you also look at it, uh, the the private are the one running the tech industry. True. Okay, and when you look at it, aside from the what you can call the bad side of or anything, but the good side of it all, you agree today that uh, there is no household you go today where technology is not does not have a presence. True. All right. Automatically, if all of these institutions are not providing facility. You can go as far as anywhere in Nigeria today. You just see somebody who has a POS machine. Does government have a POS machine? No. It doesn't. So now, it has gotten to the level where somebody provides the internet facility, another person provides the machine. Another, you know, Remember, the banking sector itself is a private. Sure. So the financial institution are also, you know, everybody is contributing their quarter. But now, when you look at technology, it's a broad business sector. True. All right. And the only people that can make things happen are the people that are in the business. You know, like uh, over the years, when you look at even what government in, engage in, in terms of even business, you don't see performance as such. But I can bet you, go to any private institution today. I give you A, then I know, expect a turnover from whatever I give to you. So automatically, uh, the technology sector has is so broad that... Uh, Money that people are making from it today, we cannot just mention it. Because as one is opening, another one is coming up. As one is closing, another one is coming up. And every day by day, this business is being brought in every day. So, Mr. Edisa, earlier you talked about infrastructural development. The private sector has been a real player in that, um, in that regard. How would you say what are the major roles it, play, it has played and would how would be would look forward to each plane in the future. Uh, you know, uh, as private sectors are today, you know, we pay taxes, sure. and the taxes we pay is also uh, an avenue to also build infrastructure. Now, what are the infrastructures that we need today? We need good roads. Without taxes, how do government generate money to build good roads? We need hospitals. How do they do that? All right. Reason why we need to also play our own part as the private is because governments to governments, how much do they generate? How are they dispensing it or are they spending it? Government side. No, now our own part. We can hold government accountable. I have played my part, which is for me to pay what is due to me to pay. Now, do your own part by building this. For instance, you can't knock on my door when you don't when you are not the one who supplies me water. <laughs> what to pay you, for the water? Of bill. course. What do you? Uh, and these are these are little little disadvantage that we are also having today. You can only get water resources maybe government owned water, uh, pipe bond water, uh, here at the city center. Yes, and sometimes right. it's poor even in the city center. Okay. So now, can you not go to some locations with uh, within Abuja, for instance? that uh, you want to knock on somebody's door and say, uh, pay your water, water bill. bill. It's not going to work. Because number one, I'm the one who sink my bowl. <laughs> so I, if I'm provider of my water, then well, what, you don't have uh, that uh, confidence to even come and knock on people's door. But that's uh, uh, one side. Now, importantly, we also contribute by even building some of these little, little infrastructures in question. For instance, in my own area, we are the one who build uh, what is available in that area. Okay. Like uh, it has become a ritual. Every year we make sure the road is motorable. All right? So people come together. We even charge some um, one or two business centers around there because we are all enjoying the good road. Sure. So if it's bad, we will also suffer the pain. Sure. So, you know, it goes a long way. 
And again, we are also helping to reduce poverty. We are helping to reduce insecurity. And I do hand is a devil workshop. True. So there is no how if somebody who is hungry will not be angry. <laughs> so you should expect uh, private are contributing, but more is still expected if we have more enabling env environment to that. And, but importantly, government will be the one that we enjoy in the long run if there is a good enabling environment. Very true. You're still on to business focus on politics and business TV. We are here with Mr. Steve Adisa dissecting private sector collaboration. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, Mr. Steve Adisa, we are still on private sector collaboration. And what would you say are the, some of the challenges private sectors are facing currently in the country? Would you say it's more leaned towards policies or would you say, well, well what, what exactly how, do you have to say about that? Uh, currently, the private sector have, um, are facing a lot of challenges. Um, considering even the current policy implementation in Nigeria. Um, Which of the policies exactly? Now, for instance, now, the, the forex market okay. is affecting um, everybody. True. Everybody, all the players. And the reason why it's affecting us is because, mm. as at yesterday, I think dollar traded for 1,002. All right. Now, if you look at that, he, uh, it affects our our business, all right? Your purchasing power. True. It affects it. And one, two, again, the, the removal of subsidy is also affecting uh, businesses today. Now, cost of diesel is on the increase. True. Cost of PMA is on the increase. Exactly. Now, if you put all together, if I buy at 1,000 Naira or 1,200 Naira as diesel is, or I buy petrol at 660 or 617. Now, whatever I produce determines what I will sell, which the ripple effect will also be a transfer to the market. All right? So prices of things in the market is on the increase. Now, people are not saying it like it is the reality of the economic outlook. Rather, they are seeing it as if maybe it's just uh, XYZ company that produces, that fixes the price just anyhow they like. All right? Mm -hmm. so, Again, multi-tax is also affecting our business. And I enjoy what um, both the Federal Inland Revenue and uh, uh, the Federal Ministry of Finance are also doing on the way to see, plus the Presidential Committee on uh, Tax, uh, uh, phys Physical, whatever you call them, where they are working um, on how to see how we can remove a lot of multi-tax that is on people, all right? Yeah, you'll be taxed at point A, you'll also be taxed at point B, you'll also be taxed at point C. So if all of those can be re removed, and probably also give holiday, you know, to certain sectors, pending the short time we have to see, okay, if I give you this, you deliver on this. Then we are very sure- You mean holiday on the tax? Oh, yes. Okay. Or, you know, I think for, uh, Federal Inland Revenue also brought um, uh, another very good ideology uh, how, uh, some days back. And uh, it was all about, okay, if you have penalty before now, it's been suspended for now yeah. to uh, January 1st, uh, 2024. Definitely a lot of people must have rushed into the office to go and get their tax clearance. True. All right? So now, these are also part of uh, ways uh, in which you can encourage uh, private sector more participation and then not for them not to look at just suddenly. We need more of them. Okay. Mr. Adisa, um, how would you say uh, some of the, how would you say the private sector has come in to address some um, social economic uh, issues we have in the country? Uh, like I, like I really rightly pointed out before now, uh, we are the drivers. 
and we are the, the private sector is actually the, the major contributor to our GDP. That alone is a huge contribution. True. All right. Now, again, being the highest employer of labor is a huge contribution. Right. Be the highest in terms of uh, innovation is also a huge contribution. Now, rather we should not look at it like okay, what sector of the economy are we looking at? What are, are the private sector doing? For instance, when you look at the education sector, you see private sector have also helped us to onboard the bottlenecks that we used to have there. Let the government uh, institution like let them go on strike. <laughs> Private, private institution. If you can afford it, you are there. How many years your mm. you, your child is a graduate, right? Mm. Go to the ex sector. We have so many private hospitals, private, hospitals, private uh, even warehouse. True. All right. Now, go to the agricultural sector, which is ac actually another strength uh, of Nigeria as today. You find private sectors there, farmers uh, associations in different clusters, and at the same time. Uh, just as if government knows that these people are strong. So, a few days back, I think somewhere, sometime last week, you know, they, okay, I think it's not last week, it's maybe within this week, today's Wednesday, maybe within the week, and uh, they have to reconstitute even the Bank of Agriculture body just to ensure that the sector itself is not just government driven alone, but they bring in private, private uh, sector to come and. So, now, if we begin to look at it, sector by sector, like in terms of all of this, you will discover that you can't throw the hand of private sector away from it in terms of development. Very true. So um, what, do, what role do private sector associations play in advocating for favorable business um, environment and uh, at the long run economic development? Um, uh, most of uh, government forums, you also realize that um, private sectors are being invited on daily basis in most government forums. Why would they want to invite them? They want to invite them just because they need to hear from them. What do you think we can do, all right, to assist the sector? It is not all policies that are meant to build the sector up. So before we implement a particular policy, we also need to hear from them. Yeah, and input. that's why you see uh, public-private partnership. Even in building infrastructures, you see public-private partnership. Sure. Like uh, one or two roads that you can mention in Nigeria today are public-private partnership. So now, not to talk of other facilities that uh, we can also, uh, that are landmark. Okay. Now, they are involved. And that is why the association called private sector uh, association are there. Now, not just to be there to say a thing against the government, rather to also guide the government, suggest to government. And that's why, why do we have the likes of uh, Lagos Ch Chamber of Commerce and right. Industry, right? Why do we also have Abuja Co uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, sure. plus every other sector of sort? Now, they also read the data to see this is the direction in which we can go. Remember, all of these people also contribute uh, their quarter in developing and in ensuring that the outlook of the economy is favorable. Inflation today is not a name of a person, but it's affecting <laughs> everybody. So, which means if every players are not coming together to fight it, then we will keep biting ourselves. Every day, you, all of us cannot just lay back and say somebody alone should do it. Remember, even the people we think should go and do it are also from the private sector. Sure. So, uh, we, we, we need to also, the private sector needs to also come up with a framework that is generally acceptable, that can also give conducive business environment to all, not just to some players or to some individuals. So, Mr. Mr. Steve Adisa, how would you say, how does um, private sector invest, uh, how does private sector collaboration attract more foreign direct investments to the country? I, I could remember way back as um, uh, 2018, there is this uh, uh, project that was launched even by the federal government, in which uh, is a way to encourage um, FDI, and is still running even today. Now, for you to 
attracts more FDI into the country. Okay. You need to also work more on on bottling those things that could be of difficulties or challenges. You know, like the N NIPC used to have in time past, uh, uh, you call it one stop, one shop stop, something of that nature. And uh, there, uh, you have everything in place. Even for you to register your business, they make it seamless, all right? Uh, for you to also operate the business, they make it seamless. And you know, when you look at all of these, there are ways in which you want to encourage the private sector, all right? Now, for you to attract, there must be a very good level playing field for everybody. You must check the infrastructures available. Again, security. You can't tell anybody now to come, go and invest in a place where they know their money cannot come out. True. All right? So everybody wants to situate their business where they know they can also be able to retrieve their proceed. All right? Now, when you also look at this, it is a way to you colorfully design a thing. And it looks so very attractive. Even a blind man will say it. Sure. So automatically, if our economy policies are attractive, it will not just attract both uh, only the locals. It will also attract the foreigners. And the more money that comes in, the better for us as a nation. So uh, a lot is being done by the private. Private sectors are ready to go into any in business anytime. So far, the enabling environment is there. And so again, we may need to also call on government to also look inward, look at the policies, look at the things. And remember, even when our chief marketer to market the nation some weeks back, it said, come to Nigeria. The nation is habitable for your business. We are ready to do business with the world. And that's what the president That's what the chief marketer of, of Nigeria <laughs> said, which is the president of uh, Nigeria. So again, uh, we just have to give that enabling environment for everybody to, to, to survive. You know, something something is not just for for you to say. It's not just for saying sake. You have to actually put it on the ground for yeah. them to see. Not just call them to come and then they come and uh, or before they come, they make their research. They're already disappointed. So, Mr. Adisa, what would you say are the private sector doing on their corporate social responsibility? Are they living up to what they should contribute to corporate social responsibility? Uh, I saw today in Nigeria. I think uh, well, some are doing, why some are not, all right? Especially when we expect more from the big players in the private sector. But you will, by and large, we, the private sector are not doing bad in, when it comes to the CSR, but we can only say more can be done. More can really be done. We, don't, we can't leave everything into the hand of government. For instance, there are, there, are location, there are areas in Nigeria where private sector can actually help develop, make, provide uh, even what we call a bowl, provide uh, even solar street lights. They can. But again, do they see the value for it? Do they know the importance of it? For everybody wants to live, go to area where in which rather you sing the praises of whosoever that is heading or who owns the place, who owns the, the, the business, instead of looking at what the people would benefit in the long run from the project. We rather want to look at, oh, if I take this to my village, definitely they will sing the name of Stephen, bringing <laughs> a bowl to his village. True. Now, forgetting that the bowl may be more needed in your own village than mine. True. So these are also some of the things the private sector needs to also look inward. And again, you know, most of these players, again, when we meet, uh, most of the time, it, it is, it, it is a, a flare of ego rather than what we can do to better the community and the society where they exist. I used to fight with a particular company on my, on my route. And I used to tell them, anytime I have opportunity of meeting any one of them, I, if you guys exist here and this place is like this, <laughs> you know, even some don't even care. You, in front of their gates, they can litter anything and make life become uh, unfavorable. Unfavor so, 
again, when you ask yourself, do you need the whole community to tell you before you do the right thing? Sure. So, again, we can only do more, but I am, I'm very sure the private sector are trying their best in corporate social responsibility. So, Mr. Steve Adisa, would you say, talking about the economy, would you say that the private sector collaboration makes the market, the, 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 the economy, monopolistic? No. No. Okay. Because when you say monopoly, it does mean that maybe they have hold a particular sector to ransom. Okay. But today, you have substitute virtually in every in, in everything in available in the market. So in a in a competitive uh, economy where the private uh, sector are the driver, you should expect competitive uh, atmosphere. So once the competitiveness is there, I don't see any uh, any reason why we should be talking about monopoly. Because if you want to talk about a monopoly, it has to be you want to now begin to pinpoint a particular company. But when you are not pinpointing a particular company, then Okay, look at the cement industry. Okay. We have so many thing, cement factories in Nigeria as of today. If I cannot afford A, I will go for B. Sure. If I cannot buy, okay, if A is selling for 5,000 and the, the other one is selling for 35, and you can still get me value for what I want, I will go and buy the one for. So automatically at that very point, it, it's nothing like monopoly again. You can mention, look at, as of today, as we speak today now, Look at produ rice producers. You have them in numbers. True. And they are not selling at the same rate. So if I can't afford X, I will go for Y. If I can't afford A, I will go for B. So at that very point, there is no monopoly uh, power from anybody. Rather, we can only keep encouraging more, partic more participators or more players. So that the more the players, the more competitive it become. And then it will also help in the pricing. True. So again, we, the, the demand and supply will also have its in place in the economy. So beyond um, looking at the monopoly part of it, we should rather be looking at the competitiveness part of the business. Okay, so um, uh, Mr. Adisa, on a conclusive note, um, we, we have talked about a lot of challenges the private sector are facing. How would you say the government could actually come in? Like you said, our chief marketer marketed us some, <laughs> some days back. <laughs> so how would you say we would work on our policies and the environment to make it actually favorable and conducive for business? Yeah, one of the things governments can do as we speak now um, is one, like I said before, tax holiday. It may not sound so sweet to anybody but there are some sectors that we need to give tax holiday to incentives infrastructure and um, giving a policy that is people friendly a policy can turn up turn the economy of any nation so also a policy can also boost the economy of any nation. So all of this put together, plus any other thing that any other person may want to mention, a way in which the government can do to help the private sector. For instance, if power sector can be built to a satisfactory level, and we having even if it's not to 24 hours a day, we're having 18 hours. You are sure of 18 hours of, or 16 hours in a day. You will discover that prices of things will also come down. True. Right? If the insecurity can be tackled, you will also agree with me that goods will get to end user and little or uh, low, mon low capital will chase those goods items. True. All right? Again, even service sector, if all of these things can be done, the service sector will also improve. Look at the telecom company. Uh, from what even the Minister of uh, Communication once said, Nigeria is the, the, the Nigeria is the only country where you buy data at a cheaper rate, right? Data so as in the, data the, as yes. in um, internet, internet data. data at a cheaper rate. Okay. All right. 
Now, which means, if more can be done in also fostering the development of that sector, automatically people will still enjoy. Sure. Every, every parent now has a gadget in the hand of the child. All right? You are at work, you need to see what your parents are, your children are doing at home. Well, there is a data at both ends. Then you are on your internet, you view it. Sure. Oh, where are you? I'm there say, okay, can you turn the camera this way? Automatically, you monitor even your home with the adv adv uh, advent of uh, technology. technology. Yeah, your CCTV can also help you to also monitor your home from wherever you are in the world. Sure. So again, we, we can only demand for more. So that if those facilities are in place, then our, the contribution of the private sector will be more. Again, it will employ more people. Remember, there is a farmer who will transport the goods to another person. Sure. Another person will transport it to another person. And before you know it, it's a source of income to everyone. In and at the, uh, yes. And at the same time, it's, it, also, it also reduces unemployment. True. Because a finished product of one company is a raw material of another company. True. And in the process, we keep building, we keep employing, we keep engaging people. Oh, you can just look at it. The food sector now. Okay, so Mr. Edisa, on a more conclusive note now, with the um, subsidy removal and the foreign exchange market, what exactly would you advise the government to do for the private sector collaboration? Yeah, one of the things that sincerely the government needs to do right now is to keep monitoring the implementation of the policy. Okay. All right. Now that's the, both the policy. Yeah, the, 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 for instance, now the, the, the FX market is really really struggling. Today down, tomorrow up. True. All right. They need to mon they need to monitor it. Uh, and and um, I remember there is there, there is an information that came up yesterday about the uh, FX market from the uh, Minister of Finance. Beyond the statement. The implementation is important. We can't keep allowing some people to holding us to ransom. Right? Now, again, in terms of the subsidy, if there is any other thing needs to be done to ensure that these items get to the users and uh, see how the players can also, okay, we need to assess FX market. We do, at ease, without any further stress. Let's do it. But government is the only one who has the armor. Anybody that hears, sledge it on it. <laughs> it's simple. True. So that everybody can enjoy. If the hardship continues, there is no how they... It's just like the common saying, you push a man to the wall, the man will face you a day and fight. True. All right? Before we get to the level of fighting, then they need to now ensure that implementation of all of these policies are in place. And government pro programs and uh, projects, should, they should also ensure that these projects are duly executed. Okay, thank you very much for that insight, Mr. Steve Adisa. You are still on Politics and Business TV, and we just dissected the private sector collaboration as the driver for economic success just for you. Mr. Ad Steve Adisa, thank you very much for that. Thank you for your book. Thank you for being on the show. Um, that's it for today from Business Focus. We'll see you tomorrow. Do stay blessed. I am Maria Adozakari. Take care. Thank you.